Let us now take the second model from this topic where we are going to do calculations related to compound interest. Let us first have a look at the formula required. Compound interest as we have discussed can be taken as P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of P minus P. Or if you take P common, it can be taken as P of 1 plus R by 100 whole power T minus 1. So where P is the principal, R is the rate of interest and T is the time period. So simply by substituting the values, we get the required compound interest. Remember again, R rate of interest should always be in percentage per annum. And the T time period should always be in terms of number of years. And the total amount in case of compound interest can be taken as principal plus CI, which can be obtained as P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T. So depending on the question, we first need to decide is it the compound interest or the amount that has to be calculated and then substitute the values at the proper places to get the required answer. Let us now take a simple example based on the calculation of compound interest. What will be the compound interest on rupees 5000 for 2 years at the rate of 12% per annum? So as you can see here, this is a direct question where the principal is rupees 5000 time period is 2 years and the rate is 12% per annum and we are supposed to find out what will be the compound interest. We know that compound interest is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T minus 1 if we take T common. So let us simply substitute the values and find out what will be the required answer. So this will be equal to the principal is 5000 into 1 plus rate of interest is 12 divided by 100 whole to the power of 2. Why? Because the time period given is 2 years minus 1. So if you try to simplify this, this will be 5000 into 1 plus 12 by 100 will be 112 by 100. So 112 by 100 whole squared minus 1. 112 by 100 is nothing but 56 by 50 or we can take it as 28 by 25. So this will be 5000 into 28 by 25 whole squared, 28 by 25 whole squared minus 1. So this is again 5000 into 28 squared is 784 by 625 minus 1. So if we take 625 as LCM here, we get 5000 into 784 minus 625 divided by 625. And this can be further simplified as 5000 into 784 minus 625 would be 159, 159 by 625. Now simplifying it further, 25 into 25 is 625, 25 into 200 would be 5000, 25 into 1 is 25 and 25 into 8 is 200. So the answer should be 8 into 159, final answer will be 8 into 159 which is equals to 1272 rupees. So the total compound interest on an amount of rupees 5000 for a period of 2 years at the rate of 12% per annum is 1272 rupees. But as you can see here, going by the formula is really a very tedious task. Lot of calculation is involved and we will have at least 4 to 5 steps till we get the final answer. So let us now see what is the smart way of solving this problem. Rather than using the formula, we can again go by the concept of percentages to get the required answer. We know that in case of compound interest, we get interest not only on the principal amount but also on the previous year's interest. So keeping this point in mind, let us understand what will be the total percentage of interest that we are going to get in this case. So the total interest, compound interest can be taken as, in the first year we get interest only on principal amount. So we can simply say that the first year's interest will be 12% as the rate of interest is 12% and principal always has to be 100%. So 12% of 100% is 12%. So this is the interest of first year. Let us now understand what will be the interest of second year. In the second year, we get interest on principal and interest on first year's interest. Interest on principal again will be 12%. Why? Because principal is always 100% and the rate of interest is 12%. So in the second year, the interest that we get on principal will be 12% plus there will be some extra amount. This extra amount is nothing but interest on interest and here that interest will be earned on first year's interest which is 12% as we have already calculated. So the extra amount that we get will be 12% of 12% that is first year's interest. So as you can see here this is going to be the total interest for second year. 
so in the first year we get only 12 percent that is on principle and second year we get 12 percent which is again on principle plus 12 percent of 12 percent understand this 12 percent here is nothing but the interest of first year so by adding this we can get the total compound interest for two years now going by the percentage of percentage concept we know that x percent of y percent is xy by 100 percent so here 12 into 12 by 100 is nothing but 1.44 so this will be equal to 1.44 percent so the total compound interest here will be equal to 12 plus 12 24 24 plus 1.44 is 25.44 percent so the total interest that is earned in two years will be equal to 25.44 percent let us once again understand this point if it is simple interest, we will get 12% in first year and 12% in second year. So, the total simple interest will be only 12% plus 12% that is 24%. But as this is a compound interest calculation, this 12 plus 12, 24 will be there. But at the same time, we also have an additional amount. This additional amount is nothing but interest on first year's interest. So, that is the reason we are taking 12% which is the rate of interest on first year's interest. This 12% here is first year's interest. So 12% of 12% that is 1.44% is the additional interest that we get in case of CI. Whereas in case of SI, we will get only 12 plus 12. So the total here is 12 plus 12 plus 1.44 which is 25.44%. So here we need to find out 25.44% is equivalent to what? And we know that 100% that is nothing but the principal. Principal should always be taken as 100% and it is given as 5000 rupees. So we can say that the principal 100% is equivalent to 5000. So simply by cross multiplication we can find out the required answer. So the CI here will be equal to 25.44 into 5000 divided by 100. So zeros get cancelled and then 25.44 into 50 when multiplied will result in 1272. So as you can see here comparatively this way of doing the calculation is much much faster and easier when compared to the general procedure which uses the formula. The only step which has to be written on paper is this one that the compound interest will be 25.44% which has to be calculated and 100% is 5000. Let us now understand how can this calculation be done in a much simpler way. If you remember in case of percentages we have discussed a concept called net or effective percentage. Net or effective percentage can always be taken as A plus B plus AB by 100%. There we had discussed that whenever two percentages are given to us and we need to find out the effective of these two percentages, we always go for A plus B plus AB by 100%. So in case of compound interest as well, the net or effective percentage concept is applicable. If you try to compare, A is nothing but 12%, that is the interest in first year. B is again 12% that is interest on principal for second year and AB by 100 is nothing but 12% of 12% which comes out to be 1.44%. So compound interest can always be taken as A plus B plus AB by 100. The only point is A and B are equal in case of CI. First year we have 12%, second year also the rate of interest remains same that is 12%. So by substituting the values in the formula of net or effective percentage we can find out what is going to be the CI for two years. If we substitute here, we get 12 plus 12 plus 12 into 12 by 100. So 12 into 12 is 144. 144 by 100 is 1.44. So 12 plus 12, 24 plus 1.44 is 25.44 percent. So blindly we can remember that compound interest for two years will be A plus B plus AB by 100 percent, where A and B are equal to the rate of interest. So friends, try to use the concept of percentages for solving the questions related to SI and CI in a smart way. Before we take up some more examples, let us quickly revise how to calculate compound interest with the help of percentages. As we have discussed in the previous example, compound interest can always be taken as A plus B plus AB by 100 percent, where A and B is nothing but the rate of interest. For example, let us say that the rate of interest is 8 percent per annum and the time period is 2 years. So instead of going by the formula, we can simply say that the total compound interest is going to be 8 plus 8 plus 8 into 8 by 100, where 
a is nothing but 8, b also is 8 and a into b by 100. So this comes out to be 16 plus 0 0.64 as 8 into 8 is 64 divided by 100 is 0.64. So 16.64 percent. So based on the principle, if we calculate 16.64 percentage of the principal value, we get the required come for interest. Similarly, let's say that the rate of interest is 14 percent per annum and we are supposed to find out the compound interest for two years. So again, with the help of the formula A plus B plus AB by 100 percent, that is nothing but the net or effective percentage, we can find out what will be the CI for two years. So CI for two years in this case would be 14 plus 14, that is 28 plus 14 into 14 by 100. And if we are good in calculation, even this step is not required. We can orally find out what will be the total percentage. 14 plus 14 is 28 and 14 into 14 is 196 as it is 14 squared. So 196 by 100 is 1.96. So 28 plus 1.96 would be 29.96 percent. And if the options are given in such a way that approximate calculation will help us to mark the correct answer, we can approximately take it as 30 percentage and get the answer in a much faster way. Now the important point to be understood here is how to do compound interest calculation for three years with the help of percentages. For example, let's say that the rate of interest is 10% per annum and the time period is 3 years. So how do we find out what will be the CI for 3 years? And as you can see here, the formula is A plus B plus AB by 100, which involves only two percentages. And here we have got 3 years, so each year is like 10%. So 10, 10 and 10, 3 values are available, 10%, 10% and 10%. So how to find out effective of 3 percentages? If we have only two percentages, we can take it as 10 plus 10 plus 10 into 10 by 100. But what to do when there are three percentages? The simple point here is find out the effective percentage for these two. That is nothing but 10 plus 10 plus 10 into 10 by 100. It comes out to be 20 plus 1, 21 percent. Now with this effective percentage and the left out percentage, again we have to find out what will be A plus B plus A B by 100. So the overall effective percentage for 3 years will be equal to 21 plus 10 plus 21 into 10 by 100. So 21 plus 10 is 31 and this is 210 by 100, 2.1. 31 plus 2.1 is 33.1 percent. So the whole idea here is when there are 3 percentages, we need to do the calculation in such a way that all the 3 percentages are used in the net or effective percentage formula. So we use the first two in the first case, then the answer with the third one to find out the overall answer. Likewise, if it is 12 percentage per annum for three years, we can take 12 and 12 in one step and get the required percentage with that effective percentage and the left out one. That is one more 12 percent. We need to apply A plus B plus AB by 100 to get the answer for three years. So this is how we can use this formula A plus B plus AB by 100 to find out the compound interest in terms of percentage for two or three years. Let us now take another example based on the concept of compound interest that we have just learned. The question here is Manish deposited some money in a bank at the rate of 6% per annum for two years at compound interest. How much money was deposited if he gets rupees 11,236 on maturity? So very clearly upon maturity whatever amount we get is nothing but the total amount. Right? So very clearly we can understand that 11,236 here is the total amount which Manish gets after two years. The rate of interest given is 6% per annum and the time period is two years. So we need to find out how much money was deposited. That is nothing but the principal amount as Manish has deposited some money which becomes 11,236 after two years. So the principal has to be calculated if the total amount is 11,236. So we can say that the total amount here based on compound interest is 11,236, rate of interest is 6% per annum and the time period is equal to 2 years. Now as we have discussed, for compound interest we can use the net or effective percentage formula to find out the total interest that we get in terms of percentage. So let us understand what will be the interest at the rate of 6% per annum for 2 years. So we can say that the CI here will be a plus B plus AB by 100 where A and B are equal to 6. So 6 plus 6 plus 6 into 6 by 100. This comes out to be 12.36 percent. So the total compound interest for two years will be 12.36 percent. 
Now, as this is the total amount, it is nothing but principal plus the compound interest. We know that principal should always be taken as 100%. And the CI what we have calculated is 12.36%. So, we can say that 100 plus 12.36%. That is total 112.36% is equal to 11,236. That is the total amount. And we have to find out how much money was deposited. That is nothing but the principal. Principal always is equal to 100%. So, this is equal to what has to be calculated. So, by cross multiplication, we can find that the principal will be 10,000 rupees. So, friends, as you can see here, the concept of net or effective percentage is very, very useful in solving questions related to compound interest. If it is for 2 years, simply use A plus B plus AB by 100. And if it is for 3 years or more, we have to use A plus B plus AB by 100 multiple times to find out the effective percentage. And then cross multiplication will help us in finding out the required answer. So, always try to use this concept of percentages for both simple and compound interest and get the answers in a smart way.